Problems have solution. Trust in our show. Oh, you will know. Ow. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me. Yo, host, Khadija. I'm going to jump right into it, family. Right into it. Um, and uh, the name of this article is called Vindicating Michael. And I got to defend the truth about Michael Jackson. All right? And this is what this is all about. You know, Michael was such a beautiful soul, but he had... Um, some pretty powerful arch enemies in Hollywood. A very powerful man in Hollywood by the name of David Geffen. And in Michael Jackson's uh, own words, he said that Michael Geffen sank his career. If that name sounds familiar to you, that is the individual uh, the hateful, ugh, by a lot of uh, people accounts, evilest man that ever ran Hollywood, that has the ability to make or break a career, and one of the most powerful people in Hollywood. That's whose yacht Oprah was on when she uh, watched that Survive in Neverland, or whatever that was, Leave in Neverland. But I'm going to share something with y'all, and I want y'all to deal with this. And I want you to please leave your comments below and tell me what you think. I'm going to have to do this in a few parts. And then I'm also going to have to come up um, and talk to y'all about not just David Geffen, but also, matter of fact, let me do Jeremy Geffen first, okay? Now... Days after Jeremy Geffen's hideous, uh, after his death, his sexual assault crimes come to light. They waited till he died. Of course, he OD'd. Um, and um, this is when you got to understand who Jeremy Nathaniel Geffen really was. Okay? Now, he's a music manager who was also... I believe, related to David Geffen. Several days ago, music manager, this article was written, by the way, um, by Daniel Sanchez, okay? And um, he was writing an article that was just making a comparison that the late David uh, Geffen had battled serious sex assault charges. Um, even though it was more than a decade ago, he was wondering how it looked like now that there was a concerted effort to erase and scrub this sordid criminal past clean. Okay? And, and to clean it up from the internet. So, I'm just going to read this article to you for, um, before I get to the second one. I want y'all to check this out. Several days ago, music manager... Jeremy Nathaniel Geffen passed away at age 40. The premature death is rumored to be a result of a drug overdose, though nothing has been confirmed. The influential manager worked with several top artists in the industry, including Sean Combs, D12, Britney Spears. Geffen led Creative Rights Group as president and CEO. Uh, founded in 2014, Geffen's company helped artists recapture and monetize the rights to their work. At CRG, Geffen aimed to help oldies performers claim their rights, rightful royalties. Those fights are often arduous with aging artists lacking the sophistication to battle complicated contracts and companies. It seemed like Geffen was doing a lot of good work for deserving artists. 
But now, let me tell y'all the real side to this story. Just days after Geffen's death, some pretty hideous uh, criminal activity began to surface. And according to these surface uh, sources, uh, they're pretty serious. I mean, pretty. Uh, Geffen's company may have actually suppressed his troubled past. Because this is what he didn't want people to remember. That 10 years ago, and long before the Me Too movement, the Los Angeles Police Department arrested Geffen. And he was arrested on suspicion of sexually assaulting two underage teenage girls. The, 31, the then 31-year-old manager eventually faced a long list of charges. But the LAPD charged him with the following. Three counts of rape, one count under intimidation, two counts of oral sex with a minor, two counts of sexual intercourse with a minor, two counts of statutory rape, two counts of inducing minors to take controlled substances, one count of possession of cocaine, and the other forcing a minor to consume the cocaine under the threat of force and violence, one count of forced oral sex with a minor under 14, I don't have to say allegedly because I'm sitting here looking at the counts right here. One count of oral sex with an intoxicated minor and one count of attempted sodomy with a minor. And let me just make mention, I hope I can do this um, in under 10 minutes. Let me make sure I make sure I tell you that that last charge included forced sexual penetration with a foreign object. The assaults allegedly took place at Geffen's Westwood Hollywood home in the multiple Hollywood and, and at multiple Hollywood nightclubs. Police had been investigating Geffen since 2007 when the first girl came forward. He allegedly saw, assaulted the first teenager in December of 2006 and then again in January of 2007. During the investigation, a second teenager reached out to the LAPD. The two victims didn't even know each other. The assaults took place at different times. Geffen reportedly assaulted the second girl in November of 2007. Authorities determined that Geffen met the underage girls at several nightclubs in Hollywood. He struck up a friendship with them and then offered them drugs. Officers set his bail at $2 million, which he posted. Speaking with the Los Angeles Times, Geffen's attorney, Danny Davis, declared his clients innocent. I strongly respect my client's presumption of innocence. I like to think that I like to think I specialize in cases of innocent clients, and that's why I'm attracted to this case. The music manager pleaded not guilty in court. Unfortunately, things didn't look good for Jeff Geffen. Facing over 20 years in jail and having to become a registered sex offender upon release, he accepted a plea deal with the prosecutors on October 7, 2008. The music manager, um, he served probation of five years. The charges were eventually reduced to misdemeanors. But who actively suppressed this news? Following Geffen's tragic passing, a source reached out to Digital Music after we broke the story of his passing. The source told DMN that Geffen's management firm had actively scrubbed much of the news. Actually scrubbed it from the internet. An anonymous tipster may have had a point. According to the We Who News, once Gavin finished his probation, he actively went after sites featuring news on the case. Hmm. Isn't that something? Geffen wants to cleanse his internet tracks for public image of all image and negative mentions on the website that he can bully, trick, or intimidate into following his agenda. The manager's lawyer who allegedly hired a third-party website to remove images and thus mentions of Geffen on the WeHo News. 
It seemed to have worked. Mentions of the sexual assault case and plea deals are now very difficult to find. But remember, R. Kelly is in jail, you guys. I just want y'all to remember this. And this this is the difference. I mean, he's out now. But this is how they suppress and they exploit and how they deem necessary. The original We Who piece on Geffen's plea deal has been permanently removed with no snapshot and there's nothing available on archive.org. Uh, we did, however, find other stories about the incidents, but many were pulled offline. Some were archived. Our source warned us that this was because of the scrubs. Though some court paperwork remained, accordingly, we just started digging. Geffen never officially commented on the news, nor did he issue a formal apology to his victims. Did you hear that? He didn't even offer an apology to his victims. Okay, and I'm going to be back with part two.